It would be great for all of us to jump up and down now, start working toward advancing our sports, but stop. We first must address a challenge that has undeservingly been thrown in the face of collegiate track and field. And in certain years, it could reach down even to the high schools. World Athletics and USA Track and Field have recently notified the NCAA that meets conducted under and athlete performance marks obtained under the NCAA rulebook will no longer be eligible for World Athletics performance lists and rankings. The World Athletics Publication Qualification System and Entry Standards document for the 2023 World Championship states, quote, under the section of conditions for the validity of performances. All performances must be achieved during competitions organized or authorized by World Athletics, its area associations, or its national federations, and conducted in conformity with World Athletics rules, and for which starting 1 January 2023, an application has been submitted in advance. After several inquiries to USA Track and Field and USOPC as to whether or not this written statement in the document means that an athlete's performance mark would only be accepted if achieved in a meet conducted under World Athletics rules, we finally got the answer, yes. You may be asking yourself, why is this mandate to be in conformity with World Athletics rules for an athlete's performance mark to be eligible for the World Athletics list and rankings is being required now? When it's never in history been previously required by either World Athletics or its predecessor organization, the IAAF. If there's an answer to this question, to date, it's been kept a secret. The NCAA rulebook states that NCAA member institutions are required to conduct their contest according to these rules. In other words, those in the NCAA rulebook. In addition, NCAA bylaws also require that NCAA member institutions conduct their contest under NCAA rules. USA Track and Field and the USOPC are telling the NCAA that they must adjust and follow World Athletics rules or they will be, they will be denying student athletes an opportunity to achieve a performance mark for World Athletics list and rankings. By the way, I would personally say that this message is being delivered as a threat. I believe they are also forgetting that most competitions open and professional track and field athletes compete in in the United States are one of the approximate eight, excuse me, 1,600 NCA meets conducted each year by you and NCA member institutions. Make no mistake, it is World Athletics, USA Track and Field, and the USOPC who are the ones arranging the requirements to deny student athletes this opportunity and also the entities who could easily solve this mess they have created by disrespecting NCA governance and its rules, as has been acceptable for decades. I find it odd that within the last few days, World Athletics named Sidney McLaughlin and Mondo Duplantis as their 2022 World Athletes of the Year. But under the new criteria, World Athletics would not have even recognized Sidney's best performance mark in the world achieved at the SEC meet in 2018 or Mondo's performance mark at the SEC mark in 219 that was the third best mark in the world that, that year. In fact, this isn't the first effort to restrict the, recon 
<clears throat> recognition and or value placed on NCA achieved performance marks. That came with the World Athletics Ranking System, where even the NCAA Division I Track and Field Championships is assigned a low rankings value. Some of you may remember that Tyra Giddens was denied a spot in the field of 24 athletes at the 2021 Tokyo Olympic Games in the heptathlon, even though she had the 11th best performance mark in the world, which was achieved at a NCAA competition and other top 24 marks that year as well. World Athletics gave Olympic Games entry in the heptathlon to 13 women with lesser performance marks, including one female with a performance mark of 253 less points. It's obvious that World Athletics is uneducated on the NCAA track and field system and that the United States has no representation on the world stage by either USA Track and Field or the USOPC. Otherwise, you and your athletes wouldn't be facing this challenge we are today. There is one more meeting to be held concerning this subject on Monday of next week. If there is no change in position by World Athletics, then the groups that have failed to provide opportunities for your athletes and many others is World Athletics, USA Track and Field, and the USOPC. We may be in disagreement with the NCAA in general on many occasions, but make no mistake, in this case, the NCAA is not the culprit. Hopefully, Monday delivers a new and positive result to this challenge. Unfortunately, I'm not going to go out and bet on it. But regardless of the result of this challenge, because we started talking about potential and challenges, regardless of the results of this challenge, it's of utmost importance that we, the sports of cross country, and track and field seek to reach our potential. Thanks, have a great week, have a great holiday, and have a great year going forward.